I'm Jen Cutter, welcome to Open Alpha. Today is all about old memories, new toys, heartbreak, and love rekindled. Let's get started. Oh, memories. I knew I was going to get a PlayStation 1 the second that Final Fantasy VII was announced as an exclusive for the system. So my brother and I put our heads together and figured out how we were going to afford this thing. And we realized that we actually had to work together. I had enough for the system, he had enough for, for the game, and everybody wins except for when everybody loses. Because when he was mad at me, I could use my system but not his game. And when I was mad at him, he pretty much got nothing. <laughs> so for all the times that he was mad at me, I'd have my PlayStation 1 and Crash Bandicoot. And you can only take so much Crash Bandicoot, especially for the first game. So I played a lot of demo discs and, you know, it was just really bored a lot of the time. And So I went back to playing SNES games and all that. But eventually I found this demo disc that had level 1 of Parappa the Rapper. So Chop Chop Master Onion, oh my god, I played that stage a hundred billion thousand trillion times. I can wake up screaming it some nights, that's how often I played it. So I worked really hard, I saved up the money, I scrapped together every spare bit of change that I could find, and I finally was able to get my copy of Parappa the Rapper. So, so very happy. <laughs> Uh, the level of joy I felt when I was finally able to play stage two of the game is pretty much almost unsurpassable. Like, think about how happy I was back when the Ghostbusters video game did not suck. That was pretty gosh darn happy, wasn't it? That wasn't even in the same ballpark as how happy I was to be in Instructor Mussolini's car learning how to drive with Parappa. Unbelievably great. So, you could imagine how incredibly sad I was when the game broke. And I don't mean like a bug <laughs> or, you know, oh, I lost my save. Gosh, I just have to play through it again. No, I mean by the game actually physically broke. I talked about it so much that my best friend's brother wanted to play it. And of course I said, sure, why not? What a wonderful thing to share games with your friends. And uh, I got a call. Uh, but a week later, so like, hey, you know, can I grab my game back? I kind of want to play, and you what? You what? Oh, so I don't know how well it's going to show up here, but uh, this is this was left on the floor in the case somehow. So the case is pretty smashed up too. The original case was anyway, and the disc snapped. It only snapped in one little part, but really, any little part is enough to be called snapped. And then I snapped on him, but you know, kids are kids and he's fine. And I even remember taping this up, again I don't think you can see it here, but there's scotch tape here because we were thinking, oh maybe it'll just work. It doesn't just work no matter how much you want it to. <laughs> and so I was very very sad, especially because at this point in the game's lifetime it became a collector's item. Copies were going for, I paid about like 50 bucks when I got it brand new, and then people were selling copies for 150. My parents must have driven me to every used game store in town, couldn't get nothing. So sad, I had to put the game in the back of my mind and just kind of let it go. If you know me, you know that I don't let things go easily, but this thing I was able to put aside, I played it for so many hours and it was wonderful. And let's take a look back at Memory Lane. You gotta do what? I gotta believe! Featuring 2D characters in a 3D world years before Paper Mario, Parappa really grabbed me thanks to the great character designs, absolutely perfect voice acting, and catchy tunes set to cute animations. Really, wow. this game was made for me. Now there is kind of a story in the game. Parappa wants to get with Sunny Funny and works his butt off to train to be a hero, get his driver's license, save up for a car, get her a birthday cake, deal with a bathroom emergency at the same time as everyone else, and take her out on the town. The cinemas are, frankly, pretty adorable, especially the bathroom one. Wow! Parappa looks so manly today. I've never seen him look this way before. Of my desire, let it let it go. Cause I'm almost on fire. 
I wanna let you know I'm a desire. Let it, let it go. I'm gonna stop fire. I see you a few times a day. You never do look my way. Uh, my car tank is empty, but mine is full. I mean, I mean, I'm full of gas and not the car. I, no, the car needs gas, but I. I anyway, we have to find a gas station right now. Excuse me, this is an emergency. I need to go right now. So do we! Oh my, now what? What can we do? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. Let's wait for it. That's a good idea. Hurry up. <sighs> what can I say? I'm a sucker for stuff like that. Now for the gameplay. This game made me finally call the PlayStation buttons what they actually are instead of using A, B, X, Y like the SNES controller. You don't really need an instruction book to figure out anything here. See the button? Press the button. Easy peasy. But, unlike Rock Band and the like, this is a game that encouraged improvisation at any old time. In fact, the only way to get a cool rating is to break from the pattern to follow your own beat. At that point, you won't really on your own since you'll just have the instrumental track behind you while you use the buttons to freestyle, with the directional pads to help change up your words a little. Passing a stage with a cool rating will even give you an upgraded ending. Just a heads up, my cool rap really doesn't sound that cool, but I'm sure that people with actual skills do a much better job. Ah, this is life. Walk the walk, even if you can't just talk the talk. Ah, I got a call. I am a chicken from the kitchen, and I ain't kidding, although nothing is written. You are a chicken from the kitchen, and you ain't kidding, although nothing is written. Crack, break, fix the door, you know. I gotta go, so yes, open up, you know. Crack, break, fix the door, you know. I gotta go, so yes, open up, you know. Crack, break, fix the kit, but turn it. Did you check toilet thunder? Did you check the uh -huh. check, check kit? Another part of the game I actually enjoy is how they handle the music when things are going poorly. You'll start swerving Instructor Mussolini's car around while you're learning how to drive. And really, I love the quacks. And my other favorite involves Cheap Cheap coming out of the TV to freak at you in person. Baking a cake, yes, means you gotta try. I'm doing this for years, but don't ask me why. Now, whenever I'm out in a boot, I'm always on the lookout for cheap games, because hey, who isn't? And when it comes to PSP titles, there were three on the top of my list. One was DJ Max Fever, which I got. Two was Parappa. And three is actually Mega Man Powered Up. So if you happen to be in an area where there's a really cheap copy available for sale and it doesn't look like somebody's dog ate it first, drop me a line. Maybe we can work something out. But first, Parappa. It was actually randomly not too long ago that I found two copies on the same day, both for very, very cheap prices. So of course, I bought them both. One was from a Rogers Plus store for, uh, I think I spent $12 on it. <laughs> uh, always check out uh, video rental places because they never really seem to know the right way to price games. So you can always, often get stuff on clearance there really, really cheap. It's always worth going through their bins because, hey, score. And then the other was from HMV for 5 bucks. So, hey, if you have an HMV near you and you're in Canada, Go check it out, because you can find some crazy game deals going on there right now. So I have two copies. One I gave to a friend, because hey, gotta share the love. And two is mine, mine, it's all mine. So, so happy. So I found the game, I raced home, I played it, and 20 minutes later I'm thinking, I waited 12 years for this? What happened? What's wrong with me? Well, where did this go so wrong? And I, I couldn't figure it out for a little bit. I had to put the game aside for a night, and... I'm going, is it the music? No. No, I, I still love the music. The soundtrack's in my car. I listen to it all the time. Is it the graphics? No, I love the graphics. The art is awesome. I used to have this great Parappa poster, and now it's gone, and I miss it very much. 
So if it's not the art, and it's not like the music, it has to be the gameplay. But I don't mind Simon Says gameplay, so I, ugh. So th the longer I, I sat and thought about it, the more I realized maybe it's just the timing, maybe it doesn't feel right. There's something that just didn't feel right. It didn't grab me the same way that the original did and that the songs still do without the game to guide them. And then I found my happy place. And I like my happy place. It's happy. And that happy place was attained thanks to three little letters called DLC. There's actually free, free being a great word, free DLC for Parappa. There are eight songs that it's just such a brilliant idea. <laughs> I, I kind of wish more games would do this, but of course they're not the same style of game. And hey, we all want more games to have free DLC. But what they did was they took the, the, uh, the main rap part of the song. And it's exactly the same. There's not a single button press or timing thing that changes at all in the DLC. Not one. But all they did was switch out the instrumental track, so it's kind of like a remix version of the song, even though it's still the same song, same lyrics, same everything. And it's brilliant. I have been playing them over and over and over again, just like I did the original game, and I cannot recommend it enough. I, I, now that I know that this DLC exists and that it's good, I would have been more willing to spend the 40 or 50 bucks on a new copy when it came out. But hey, now that it's not new anymore, you don't have to, and I can still heartily recommend picking up this game. So let's have a listen at the DLC tracks. I absolutely love these remixes. I wish they released a new album with these tracks on it since I'd buy them in a heartbeat. I also wish for a sequel that doesn't suck, a castle, a stable, money to take care of all my family and friends, and every game known to man. <laughs> in the meantime, here's a quick listen of my favorite tracks. Chop Chop gets spoiled with four different remixes. Mussolini drops the piano and gets a new hip-hop beat. In the original days, Mussolini was my favorite, favorite, favorite stage, which might have something to do with the fact that I was years away from getting my own license at this point. Cheap Cheap is my new favorite, maybe because I'm trying to learn how to cook. Oh, and maybe because the remix is seriously rocking. I had to save the bathroom stage for last because the change is so drastic and yet somehow works wonderfully. The new one totally sounds like an RPG opening theme. Let's compare. I need to go just as bad as you. What I had this morning, I don't even want to say to you. You've heard the DLC, you want the DLC, so let me show you a few ways to get it on your PSP. The game actually gives you the option to download it directly from your PSP, but you don't really have to. There are two main ways to grab the songs. You can go to Game FAQs to download them, or go to the site you'd be directed to on your PSP anyway and put them on your hard drive. Now I still recommend going through the options menu on the PSP Parappa UMD to try and download the songs first. Don't actually download them if you don't want to, but as so long as you just try, it will create the always obtusely named PSP folder that these songs have to go into in order to be found by the game. Then you just connect your PSP with the USB cable to your PC, drag and drop, and be on your merry way. So that's it for this edition of Open Alpha. As always, all the show notes and links can be found at openalpha.tv. I blog almost every day at jencutter.com. And I love email, so drop me a line at Jen with two N's at openalpha.tv. Now next week, next week is E3 and it's going to be insane and of course I'm going to be there. I'm going to spend a lot of time hanging out with Darren from Hack5 and 8 billion other journalist friends and of course, oh yeah, you know, every new game that's going to come out in the next little while. It's going to be pretty crazy, so if there's something that you want to see that you know is going to be at the show but you don't think is going to get a whole lot of mainstream attention, Drop me a line, let me know, I'd love to check it out. I'm always interested in what people are interested in. It's all good. So it's going to be a crazy week. I don't know what form the updates are going to come in, but definitely keep an eye on the blog, keep an eye on openalpha.tv, uh, even check me out on Twitter, because there's probably going to be a lot of posts coming your way uh, from the Twitter feed. And, uh, and we'll all have a good, good time. So I'll see you next week. I got